So in this video, this is the start of our service overview series. We're going to start with what a service item is. This is something that is often the starting question for people when they're looking at items. You know, you have your items list, those are inventory items, and then you'll have a list which is your service items, and people often want to understand the difference between the two. So here we are in Business Central. So we can see an items list here, and again, this is the item list that most people are familiar with. This is the things that they buy, this is the things that they sell, the things that they produce. So in essence, this is what your company owns. It's what you've either received, it's what you've made and put into stock. There could be multiple of the same item on hand. So if you think about, for example, a washing machine. So your system, You've got an item card because you produce a washing machine. You can have lots of these on hand. However, once you sell this washing machine to a customer, that specific machine has its own serial. It's at a specific location. It's installed. It's no longer something that's a part of your inventory or your inventory valuation. Therefore, it gets created as what's called a service item. So if we open up our service item card, so as most master records do in Business Central, you're going to have a number, which is the unique identifier for that service item. You'll have a description, which typically will match the item description. You can reference an item number, which is your item number in the item list, what we were just looking at. So that would be a reference back to the inventory item that you have. That can be helpful if, say, for example, you need to sell them a replacement unit or you just want to reference what the inventory item is that you would typically build. You can categorize service items. You can group them so that they can be applicable for specific discounts. You can associate variant codes, same thing that you're able to do for regular items. One of the unique things about a service item card is you'll notice that it's got a serial number, it's got a status, and as you go down, you'll notice that it's assigned to a specific customer, it's their specific location, it can even go further into a, a ship to location. So a service item specifies the specific unit that you would go and you would service. So again, if you're thinking about a washing machine, as soon as you buy it from Home Depot or Lowe's or wherever it is, you're buying a specific serial number, you own it. If somebody comes and they do service work on it, they're gonna wanna keep a log or a record of the work that was done on that specific unit. So you can see here on a service item, you can specify that unique identifier, that serial number for that unit. You can indicate a status of the specific service item, so whether it's installed, whether it's temporary. You can look at your warranty periods. So for example, if I look here and I indicate that this was something that potentially was installed on the first, based on my service management setup, you can set up warranty periods. So in this case, this one is set up to default to two years. And I can see that when this gets added to a service order, I can have the system automatically default 100% discount on parts and 100% discount on labor. Now, as most transactional records go, of course, if for some reason I wanted to deviate from that discount, I can, but this is again just our master record. It's defaulted in from the service management setup, and again, I can change it. As I mentioned, because it's a service item, a customer owns it, it's their inventory, so it's not, again, part of our inventory valuation. So it is able to be referenced by which customer owns it. I can indicate where that service item is on their site. I can go a step further and have a reference to a specific ship to code. So if that customer has multiple ship to addresses, I could associate those as well. You can create service orders and you can create service contracts. So if this service item was part of a contract where let's say every quarter or every six months I had to go out and do a, a warranty or just a checkup on that, I could create a service contract so that I could go out quarterly or every six months. 
If it were something that I bought from a vendor, I could reference the vendor that I buy it from. I can reference details about what my cost was, what I sold it for, what date I sold it, when I installed it. So all of this information essentially is specific to one piece of equipment or one item. And again, the key thing about this is that once the customer sends it back to me and I initiate a service order, even though I may physically have it in my facility, even though that service item is with me, the, the system knows that I don't actually own that item. The thing about service items is you're able to do things like associate components. So if, for example, there was a list of spare parts that I typically need when I service that, I can associate that to my master record. You can set up service contracts, as mentioned. You can indicate specific skills required to work on this item and specific resources if you choose to. You can associate dimensions as you typically do in other areas of Business Central. You can view statistics, you can add comments. One of the most powerful things here is being able to see the service item log and the history. So again, I'm able to go out and for that specific unit, I would be able to track the specific updates and the specific uh, work that's been done on that service item. I can initiate new items from a service. I can go ahead and I can troubleshoot. So if, for example, you had a service desk and they had, you know, they were the first line of defense, customers would call them. You can actually set up a series of questions that could be asked. And depending on the answers, that initial person would be able to help that customer go through and maybe troubleshoot on their own. Again, we can see the ability to add resources and components. You can look at different service orders that are open and different shipments that have happened in the past for that specific order. And then again, probably one of the most powerful things about service is being able to see your service ledger. So what was the history of the service that was done, which could include miscellaneous costs. It could include resources going out and performing work. It could also be spare parts, as mentioned earlier. And it will also track anything that was covered under warranty. So this gives me complete history about a specific unit, a specific serial number owned by a specific customer.